I don't know whether. How was that? Or how was the <laughs> evening? No, how was Swinnerton? This, this Swinnerton is the one everyone dreads. No, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, but very slippery. Very difficult in this car. I filled up with fuel, and the guy in the petrol station said, Have you just come out of the sanatorium? My first car was a Mini, and this was in 1965. I bought it from a chap in North London and went to his garage and he got a blower benefit sitting next to the Mini. And he paid the same amount of money for the blower as he had for the Mini. And I tried to buy the Bentley instead of the Mini, but needless to say, he didn't sell it to me. And it wasn't until 40 odd years later that I managed to buy one, which was a wreck, restore it, from there on, it's become a passion. These are quite complicated cars that take an awful long time to restore. Uh, and if I was doing it on my own totally, it would never happen. Good morning. Good morning. Let me just turn that off. We found you. We found you. Shake your hand. Good morning. So is this part of a farm? Yes, it was a barn which was built 20 odd years ago as an agricultural building. It's been used for lots of things since, but uh, yes, it is part of the farm which has been sold off over the years. I've been in this area for 23 years now. So, so you do all the work on the car here because we've seen parts of cars, chassis, wheels, everything's done by you. Most of it's done by me. There are some things I don't do, um, panelling and painting. It's not a Formula One workshop, I can tell you that. Well, one of the crucial things today is to talk Bentley as well, so I hope you're going to show us the car. I should think so. You only see it clean at the start of a rowing. <laughs> this car has just got its own ability to pick up all the mud and rubbish that there is around. You'll see I've put these mud spats on just to try and stop some of that hitting the windscreen. I'll probably do best part of 15,000 miles in this this year. So a lot of it on rallies or going to and from rallies. <laughs> I don't have to fix an awful lot, so long as you maintain it well. Bentley engineering is wonderful, um, and this is quite sophisticated. It's got a chassis lubrication system on it, which means that all the moving parts on the car are lubricated by a hydraulic pump. W.O. Bentley went bust in 1931, and Rolls-Royce took them over, and the car was introduced with a slogan of being a silent sports car. Most W.O. Bentleys are, are fairly raucous, as you know, but this, in production mode, would have been quite quiet. It was quite advanced engineering. What gives them such longevity? They're an enduring car, um, and a hundred years of them proves the point. That's the oil reservoir for the hydraulic pump, which is under the dashboard. Around the car, there's lots of little bits of copper tube, uh, and that goes into a lubricator, which distributes a measured amount of oil to all of the moving parts, depends on which one needs most. And it's got servo-assisted uh, brakes. Although they're rod and cable, there's a servo assistance on the gearbox. I mean, it's a long wheelbase car, so it does slide and you can get it quite sideways. I recall doing a, a test on the low grip surface at Alton Park on Rally of the Tests. The tyres that I had on the car were not good tyres and it was like driving on slicks. And I had to work so hard to keep the car from spinning, but it was good fun. Your pulling off incredible results, like RSC Rally the Test, your fourth place. A 1937 car, ranged against all these modern cars, and the modern cars and crews are going, how did they do that? What's the secret? Being in tune with the car. 
people don't understand how I can do what I do in that car, but they're not used to driving that car. I am. But it's the combination of drive and navigator. There's three things that make a successful team, car, driver and navigator. But I know how difficult it is to navigate. It's okay when everything's working well. When something goes wrong, um, you know, and you miss a slot, then suddenly you've got to reverse the trip, you've got to rethink things. That's where the skill comes in. Daughter Emily is a good navigator. She's she was out with you on the Flying Scotsman this year. So she she's coming on, isn't she? She's doing really well. She thoroughly enjoys the social aspect of rallying as well as the competitive side. Stuart, you're one of seven Bentleys on the jog. What are the chances of getting into the medals? What are the chances of getting to John O'Groats <laughs> is okay. probably more fundamental. Uh, as you know, last year none of the pre-war cars made it to John O'Groats for different reasons. I mean, without a doubt, the vintage cars featured in early the jogs um, and then fell by the wayside and I've always wanted to do it in a vintage car. Lee Powley was my brilliant navigator on the Rally of the Test and he's sitting with Bill Kinder on the jog. Richard Lamley, who is my other really brilliant navigator, is sitting with me. Last year was the first time I've done it I needed to do, and it's a big rally. Rally of the Tests and the jog are two really tough rallies, especially for a pre-war car. You've come through quite a bit, including recently you've been very ill, you've had some serious treatments. How do you pick yourself up? From, from something like that. You've got to get on and deal with it. Life throws all sorts of things at you. You can't succumb to that. You've just got to fight it. As far as picking yourself up is concerned, life's too short, you've just got to get on. You've just got to do it. I've decided to get a race license this year for my 70th um, and went racing. Oh, for goodness so, sake. Yeah. What? Racing what? The Bentley, of course. Oh, wow, how'd you get on? Uh, I stayed on the track, I didn't push anybody off, I didn't come last, um, so I achieved my objectives. And it was great fun, and I shall do some more next year. <laughs>